Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your 25th AngularJS tutorial and in this video we're going to take a quick look at pretty URLs. Dog. So in this tutorial series so far, we've been using URLs, something like this with that hashtag. That's the kind of way that Angular works, all right? And this is a major problem to me because I've got a serious case of OCD and I want my links to look quite clean, something like that. Now, fortunately, uh, Angular lets us do this. And by the way, I'm just going to demonstrate that this wouldn't work. You can see it can't get home. Okay, so what I'm going to do is demonstrate how we can do this in AngularJS, okay? And the way we're gonna do it is by using the location provider service that Angular provides us with and uh, setting HTML5 mode to be true. So I'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but for now, what I wanna do is just change these. I'll change that one to home, you see, without the hash, and I wanna demonstrate what happens when we go, when we click on this. So it doesn't work, okay? So I want this to work like that. So the way we do it is by going into the config method right here and we need to pass the location provider service through into this config method so we can use it in this function to set HTML5 mode to be true. So let's pass that through as a dependency first of all. Just dollar sign location provider like that. And then we also need to pass it through into the function itself so that we can use it. So let's put that in there as well. And then once we've done that, you just want to come to the um, above the route provider right here. And I'm just going to say location provider dot HTML5 mode true like that. OK, and essentially HTML5 mode is just based on the HTML5 history API, which basically allows us to set a URL on the same domain with JavaScript. OK, so. That's what we've done right there. We've set HTML5 mode to be true so that now we can use these links like that, okay? But there's one more thing we need to do before this works. And that is to go into the index.html and then come under the head and say base href equals forward slash. And we're just saying this is the base URL of our application, okay? So we need to do this thing first of all, passing the location provider there and there, set HTML5 mode to be true so that we can use those kind of URLs, then go into our index and do the base tag, and set the href to be a forward slash like that or whatever the base of your application is. So now this works and if we change these to just forward slashes instead of those hashes and in fact I'm going to copy this because I'm going to add one in for the uh, contact view. So let's pop that in as well. Remember, we set up this route in a previous tutorial. Um, contact like that. Now, if I go to the route there, that's fine. If I click on list ninjas, works. Contact works. Home works. And you can see now the hash is not in the URL. So that's nice and pretty. But it doesn't end there, I'm afraid. This is fine if you're in the application and you're clicking on links. But what if you decide to just go to a specific URL from the offset? For example, you know that the directory on this web application is forward slash directory. So you just go there to begin with. No, nope, not going to work. And that's because we're actually requesting this resource, okay? It's not being taken care of by Angular. So it's saying, well, actually, I can't find this uh, resource, this directory resource. It doesn't exist. And that's because we've set these routes up in Angular and Angular is not handling this when you're going there directly. So what we need to do is add in some rewrite rules into our HT access file, put that on the root of the server so that we say, look, OK, if someone writes something in like this, if there is a resource named that, you go ahead and grab it. If that's not a resource, what I want you to do is redirect to the index.html file where the base of our application is here and then let Angular handle this route. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm not gonna do it here in Atom using this host right here. What I'm gonna do is use WAMP. So you can see right here, I've got WAMP server running. And if I go into my www directory, what I've done is just got all of these files here and I've dumped them in there in the root of that directory. Okay, so now if I go to the local host, oops, wrong one. If I go to local host there, 
then you're going to see this application exactly as it is here. But still, if I do something like this, directory, it's not going to find it because we've not set up that HT access file yet. So that's what we're going to do now. Now, I've already written something like that right here, okay, in Notepad. So I've said a rewrite engine on. Then these things here, what it's doing is saying, okay, if you go to a URL up here in the address bar and that resource exists on the server, then go and grab it, that's fine. If it doesn't exist, then what I want you to do is redirect here to the index.html file and then AngularJS is going to take care of this route. Okay, so I'm going to save this now. If I go to save as, I'm going to save it right here as dot ht access, and I'm going to make sure that I click this and go to all files. Okay, so if I save that now, get rid of that. This time, if I request this URL, it's going to bring it up for me. Okay, same goes for anything else that's on our application. Okay. So there we go, guys. That is how we get pretty URLs. And that brings me also to the end of this tutorial series. Um, I hope you've learned a fair whack about Angular along the way. There are going to be other AngularJS tutorials coming up. Uh, in particular, what I want to do is make a real kind of world application using Firebase. Now, Firebase says it offers our applications a backend as a service, which means that basically we can use it to store our data in a real time, no SQL database and sync it with our project using their API. Now, they also provide um, a library called Angular Fire, which is designed specifically for using Firebase with AngularJS and it makes it really easy to hook the two together. So in this project, what we did was just grab our data from a JSON file right here in our project folder. But in the next series, what I'm going to be doing is storing, retrieving and updating our data in a Firebase NoSQL database. OK, so we can make changes, change them and it's going to update on the fly in this database. So that's what we're going to be doing in the future. I'll do a whole tutorial series on that where we make an application like a to do list or something like that. OK, oh, and by the way, a NoSQL database is just a database which stores JSON making it really easy to use with JavaScript applications like this, okay? So there we go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial series. Um, if you have any comments whatsoever, feel free to leave those down below. Otherwise, I will see you in this tutorial and many others to come. I'll see you guys then.